Okay, what's up guys? So, uh, Fact Faction, they have uploaded, I really do love watching their videos, because it's always something entertaining, always something, like, you know, besides all of the comedy, I also like, you know, watching serious videos from time to time. But, uh, anyways, this is definitely, when I seen the, uh, title to this, I was all like, yeah, finally, you know, something where it's like, it ain't ending off, where this person went missing and was never found. This one is uh, five missing people that turned up alive, and I really do love hearing stuff like that when you know and they've, a person, have they, when they've been found, I like hearing that they're alive, I like hearing that they're well and stuff, and sometimes you just, you know, I think I remember there was one that I had watched from theirs, and it was the kid, his mom had sent them off somewhere, and she wrote, she wrote a note saying she was okay or that he was okay, but then she ended up killing herself. So it's like, yeah, you're never going to know what happened to that kid. But I was just all like, yeah, hearing stuff like that, it's just, man, that's messed up. But, you know, to hear things like saying, they, you know, oh, yeah, they went missing for some time and then they were found alive and then they were doing well. Yes, I love hearing that. And this is part one. So they might, I think that's what they did last time. They had part two on another person's channel. So, uh, yeah, definitely I will um, check that one out, too. But uh, let's see. Let's see what goes down in this one. Your intros, man. Five Missing People That Turned Up Alive, Part 1. Number 1. Gabriel Nagy. In Australia, on January 21st, 1987, Gabriel Nagy called his wife from work and told her that he was coming home for lunch. Unfortunately, this was the last time she would ever hear from him. Gabriel's wow. burnt-out car was discovered on the side of the road the following day, and two weeks later, money was withdrawn from his bank account in order to purchase camping supplies. Dang. Following this final transaction, so Gabriel must have been vanished like kidnapped or something. In 2010, a full 23 years later, Gabriel Nagy's wow. name appeared on a newly applied for Medicare card, and a police detective who had never given up on the search for him picked up on it. This occurred two weeks before an inquest that would have declared him dead. Upon being found, Nagy revealed that his earliest memory was of bleeding profusely from the head, and that he had no recollection of who he was. Over the two decades that he was missing, he had given himself a new name, worked odd jobs, and turned to alcoholism before being wow. taken into work as a church caretaker. Nagy applied for the Medicare card to treat a cataract at around the same time that flashes of his real name began to return to him. Ultimately, Nagy said he was relieved that he hadn't been responsible for any crimes, as he always felt he was on the run from something and was happy to be reunited with his family after two decades. Wow. Through photographs and talks with his family, Nagy has been able to regain large parts of his memory. That's okay. Uh, let, let, now, let me, let me talk about that one, because sometimes, you know, you can't believe everything. Cause this, I, but I don't know. This, this is the way it could have happened. That could have possibly been true and stuff. But um, probably, he, you know, sometimes people... You know, they just want to get away from, you know, their normal lives. He probably wasn't feeling it, might have been having some issues at home. So he just wanted to get away, burnt his car up to make it seem like he might have been kidnapped or something. I don't know, because it's just stuff like that. I never hear things like that happening all the time. It's very, very rare. So that's why it's like I'm kind of iffy about hearing things like that. But who knows? It could have possibly happened. He could have possibly been kidnapped. But it's like, where's the kidnappers? Why'd they just let him go like that? He just randomly just, you know, do something like that. That that I don't know. That just seems kind of iffy. That seems kind of just, you know, like it might be true, but at the same time, he probably didn't he probably wanted to get away. Then it's that's just pretty random. Like after 20 years of being gone, you're just now remembering your kids, your wife, family photos, and all of that. Then your own your own name. And so, yeah, I don't know about that one, guys. That that one, it might be true, but at the same time, it's that's that's kind that's kind of iffy. It's kind of sketchy how that that how that whole thing went about. But number two, anyway, Brenda Heist, mother of two, Brenda Heist went missing in 2002 after dropping her children off at school. At the time, Heist had been going through a divorce and had just been denied mm. housing assistance. Her husband reported her disappearance after their children came home to an empty house, but wow. in the years that followed, she wasn't found. Heist was declared legally dead in 2010. Dang. Unbelievably, in 2013, 11 years after she went missing, 
Heist resurfaced after going to the police with her story and revealing that she was a missing person. She explained that on the day she disappeared, she was feeling upset and unsure of how she would be able to support her children, and proceeded to cry on a bench at a Pennsylvania park. She was then approached by three homeless hitchhikers, who comforted her and encouraged her to go traveling with them. She wow. decided to take the opportunity to start a new life and believed that her children would be better off without her. Wow. Heist traveled to Florida where she found herself a new group of friends and had stolen and assumed at least three different identities, Dang. one of which she stole while working as a Oh wow, she wasn't even on Dr. Phil. She had spent some of her missing decade begging on the streets and living the homeless life and also spent some time in jail for drug possession. Wow. Heist was sentenced to one year in jail for violating the terms of her probation after she was caught using someone else's ID during a traffic stop. While Heist's former husband says he forgives her for abandoning the family, her children have turned her away and refused Dang. to have anything to do with her. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, stuff might get hard, you know, times might get hard and things. Even whether you're going through a divorce or, you know, having just issues at home. But that doesn't mean that you just just leave and then you don't you know you don't let nobody know where you're going and stuff and i feel like that was probably the last that was probably the same case with the last guy it was he just he probably was having issues and stuff and then he just wanted to leave all of that but with her it's like you went into had to the the second life and you just ditch your kids like you have kids that i mean i want to understand if you don't and you just trying to get away or something all right i can understand that but you have kids you have a responsibility you can't just leave and ditch them like that so i just that's probably i don't know like if, if that were being a situation like that then it would be i would probably be all like you know what you know, I just got to live positive, be a positive person, forgive them. But it's like, yeah, we're going to have a lot of things to talk about and stuff that you can't just be doing that to people and stuff. Because it's just that, that ain't normal. You got kids, you got family. So, yeah, stuff like that, that should, people shouldn't be doing that when you got kids and stuff. So, but, uh, yeah, that's 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 crazy. You know, she just lives this homeless life, then also doing drugs. And it's like, you got kids to, no, that's, that's, that's pretty, in my eyes, that's messed up. I don't care whether you came back or not. You went and left your kids for all of these years and stuff to do drugs and to be homeless. No, that's like, you had a good life. You let it all go just for that. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but that ain't right. Number three, Natasha Campush. In Austria on March 2nd, 1998, 10 year old Natasha Kampusch was kidnapped by Wolfgang Priklopil while on her way to school. Dang. She was missing for a total of eight years. While wow. in captivity, Natasha was kept in a windowless, soundproof cellar in her kidnapper's home and was beaten and starved in order to prevent her from escaping. Dang. She was also raped repeatedly by her abductor. Priklopil warned her that there were explosives in the house's doors and windows and okay sorry to pause but i have heard of okay now i've heard of stories like this before because i think there was two case two cases where it was like that and i think one had happened in uh, washington i don't know where the other one had happened at but the one guy he had this house and he did that he but it was it wasn't just like with a little girl he did this to like multiple women had them in there and they would have kids but then he would you know he would i guess kill the kids as when they're like infants or something so they wouldn't you know be all crying and loud and all of that i don't know why but uh yeah he did that and then the second one i think this guy was a cannibal because i think they said you know sorry to get a little bit detailed and stuff but he was like cooking the people and things and uh yeah it was you know there's some crazy stories there's crazy stuff that does i've heard of stories like this before where people then um they done went missing and they've been kidnapped and been hidden in houses for all of these years and stuff some died and some live but uh yeah this is definitely a story like this i didn't hear it before a lot but of times but not with the little kid ready to kill her if necessary Dang. However, as time passed, she was given more and more freedom by her kidnapper and was eventually allowed to spend time in the rest of the house and go outside. Wow. She was even taken on a skiing trip by Priklopil, who throughout the period of her captivity also gave her books, newspapers, and a radio that allowed her to educate herself and develop mentally. Wow. Natasha Kampfush emerged back into the public eye on August 23, 2006, when she managed to escape from her captor while she was vacuuming his car and he had to take a phone call away from the noise. 
Seeing her opportunity, she made a run for it. Yeah, I've been. To convince a neighbor to call I've been like tracks, just, just a track star life, all Natasha down that road. Gone. Books, one of which she has written, and a movie. On the day Natasha escaped, oh, wow, they made a movie. Appeal managed to evade police and took his own life wow. by stepping in front of a moving train near Vienna Northern Station. Wow. Natasha now owns the house that she was previously held captive in. She okay. Number that's two. me now. I've been in this house for all my like all my life. I would not own that house. I mean that that I think a house like that. I would if it was if it was up to me. I would tear that whole house down because it's just I don't I don't want to be in no house like that. It's like I've been kidnapped, starved to we were not starved to death, but starved. And then it's all like you know this man that he sat there. It's like raped the woman i would yeah that house that would leave like bad memories if i was her i'd tore that whole house down i was like that house gotta go i'm sorry but it's just john darwin one day in december of 2007 ex-teacher and prison officer john darwin walked into a london police station and told officers that he believed he was a missing person Darwin was last seen leaving the home he shared with his wife five years earlier and was Dang. spotted on his red kayak in march 2002 Darwin claimed that he had no recollection of anything that had happened to him in the time since he'd gone missing, but appeared to be free from any form of illness. Upon Darwin's initial disappearance, police put in maximum efforts in order to find him, but even the numerous helicopters and boats sent out were unable to uncover any traces of him. Eventually, a paddle which was believed to belong to the kayak was discovered. All hope seemed lost when the wreckage of Darwin's kayak was found in several locations. A year wow. after his disappearance, John Darwin was declared legally dead. His wife, Anne, sold their home and moved to Panama in 2007. It was later revealed that Darwin and his wife had faked his death in wow. order to claim life insurance money, and that he had secretly been living in their home since 2003, using a secret hole behind a wardrobe wow. to move from the family home to a bed sit next door, which they also owned. In 2006, while in Panama, this photo of John and Anne was taken in an estate agent's office, which ended up online and was used as evidence against the couple. That's... Darwin and his wife were both charged with fraud and were ordered to pay back more than half a million pounds Dang. and were each sentenced to over six years in prison. That's and that's exactly that's exactly why like sometimes when you hear them stories of people going missing that can be the case but they were dumb enough to have a photo taken of them okay and it's like me if I was doing something like that and you ain't gotta ever worry about me doing something like that to fake my debt to just get more money in life no I ain't gonna do something like that but if I am I'm gonna like okay I gotta be hidden I gotta be ghost I can't be out in the open like this. I gotta be walking around seriously with a Rey Mysterio mask everywhere I go. I can't be going out in public. And it's it's stuff like that. That's exactly why when I be hearing them stories of people going missing and it's like it's always some old person. I don't know, but it's like you just go up to the police station and be like, okay, I think I'm a missing person, and it's all like, well, are you or are you not? Because it's just that's that doesn't even really make any sense and stuff. You know that you're just oh you you went missing and it's like you're not letting anybody. You you just now telling about it and stuff you're just now coming out about the whole thing yeah that's just stuff like that you can't always believe that Number five charlie bothwell father charles bothwell the fourth and stepmother monique dillard bothwell reported their 12 year old son charlie bothwell as missing on june 14th 2014. charlie was last seen at the family home in detroit and was feared to be dead after not being found for over a week the case Hold on, sparked Nate. phone's going off Ain't nobody special. Huge police search and Sorry if you're hearing that right attention. now. I apologize. Charlie's father even appeared on the Nancy Grace news show 11 days that after woman. the initial report. She, all right, I'm just going to let you guys know right now that she, her, she's just, you know, you talking to her, that, that woman, because I she's always getting into it with people and stuff. Like, I think she's trying to expose them or find the truth. I don't know, but anyways. That is missing child. However, during the interview, some information about Charlie's whereabouts came to light, which stopped Charles in his tracks. It reports that your son has been found in your basement. Mr. Bothell, are you? Are you? What? Yes, he saw. Getting 
reports that your son has been found alive in your basement. What? Yes, that's why is he like so I would have taken off running. I'd be like if my son right now from from yeah, how how could your son be alive in your basement? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is so faking it. He, I, he's just, he's faking it in my eyes. That's I like. Have, I have no idea. I, 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 <sighs> wow. Now this he's is still sitting there with the interview. We hearing out of Detroit that we're trying to confirm. Uh, okay, everybody in okay, let me just, let me just time out and pause on this one. You you just heard that your son was found, and I apologize. I was get, is sending out a text message and stuff, so I, forgive me if I didn't hear if they if they already did say that. But um, in your basement, and you're still sitting there like, oh my, uh, wow, I didn't even know. And it's like if that was me, right? If I they just told me my son was found in my basement, I'm gonna say what, and then I'm gonna take off, run into my car, take off in my, you know, take off at the car, doing like 120 all the way to my house, and it's like, dude, was I was I supposed to know this or was I not? Cause I didn't even know. Like, how do you not know something like that? You have a house, you have a basement, okay? So it's like you're one would think you're bound to look. All over the place. So yeah, stuff like that. That's I don't know about that. New York, please get on it. Uh, let me know when we get Charlie Langton from WWJ. Jeez. We've been we've been on the lookout for him. We searched that entire house repeatedly. The FBI searched. The Detroit police searched. We no. all searched. As police were serving a search warrant on the house, the 12-year-old boy was found in the basement behind wow. a pile of boxes. Police claim he was very thin when he was found and wow. had marks on his upper body. Charlie explained to police that he was put in the basement by his stepmother as a punishment Dang. and he was too scared to try and escape. It is alleged that both parents physically abused Charlie wow. and made him engage in an extreme exercise regime. In April 2015, both Charles and Monique were charged with torture and second-degree child abuse. The torture charges were later dropped, and during the trial in January 2016, Charles admitted to physically abusing his son with a PVC wow. pipe. He took a plea deal and was sentenced to 18 months of probation and has to participate in anger management classes. He has also lost custody of his son and is not Good. allowed any contact with him. Good. It has not been made public what sentence Monique received. That's that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for a video, then please leave it in the comments below. Subscribe to see more videos like this. That's you know. Okay. Now the thing is, I, I've said this tons of times to you know my uh my mom that it's like if if i were to have a step parent and they were to like the thing is because that i i feel like that's just you know step parents because they that's what they said the step mom put him down there and it's like i ain't seen videos where it have been like step parents they didn't went and gave their kids crazy haircuts and then now hearing this if i were to have a step parent and they were treating me like that and it's all like okay i told them okay face to face like you gotta remember you're not my actual parent you're my step parent so you have no control over me yeah you might be my legal guardian but you have no control over me okay so it's like punishing me giving me crazy haircuts or putting me in the basement for all of this time stuff like that wouldn't happen okay that's just i'm just i don't know like they said that the boy was scared yeah i just probably would have tore down that whole house it's like yeah you putting your hands on me and stuff and you're my step parent it's like no that's the you know there's a difference between parents and step parents step parents have no control parents have control okay so it's like i don't know like i wouldn't disrespect them but at the same time i would expect the same thing from them like don't disrespect me or be act treating me like that and stuff i that's that's that type of stuff i don't go for and even if when i have kids and if it doesn't work out between me and the mom it's like i'm not i'm gonna let the you know my new wife know it's like look don't put your hands on my kids don't do any of that because then you're gonna have to deal with their real mom if they tell her what you've been doing and so even i would be mad at something like that you and put your hands on my kids and stuff stuff like that i wouldn't go for so uh yeah hearing stuff like that it's just you know that's i, I don't know i feel like that's just you put fear into two like 
put too much fear into a kid's eyes and stuff. But yeah, I wouldn't go for things like that, whether I was having a step parent or I was, you know, my kids were to have a step parent. I wouldn't go for stuff like that. And even when I, my kids have kids, I'm like, look, don't let if you if it doesn't work with you and the um, biological mom, then it's all like, you know, you got to let the step parent know, you know, or the person that's going to that's going to be looking after your kids. Don't be putting your hands on my kids. Don't do, do anything to my kids. Call me, okay, and I would tell the same thing to, like, if I were to have a second wife, but I had kids by the other wife, I would, like, call, if there's something going down, call me, and I will handle the situation, or you can call their mom and talk to them about it, but yeah, you just sit back and chill, don't let that stuff get to you, okay, but anyways, yeah, this was a pretty, pretty interesting video, uh, all of the stuff that's gone down, and then the people being missing, and then they trying to get their money, or like some insurance money, and fraud, and all of that, yeah, that's uh, stuff like that, I kind of see that sometimes, and um, it's just, it's kind of just retarded and dumb when people do stuff like that, it's like, why would you do all of that, it's, a, there's a thing called getting a job, and making your money like that, if you're not making enough, then do training for a much more bigger job so you can earn money that way. And I feel like that's just people being lazy. You'd rather go through all of that time and trouble to fake your dad hide than going out, excuse me, and training to get a much more bigger job and stuff. And it's just, yeah, that's just people. They're not thinking. And it's like, I, they belong on that TV show, World's Dumbest Criminals and stuff. That's what they should do. Like, fact, faction, that's what they, that's my um, recommendation. I was thinking like, you know, what can I recommend to them? And I don't know if they're going to see the video or not. But uh, yeah, that's what you should do. Five of the dumbest criminals in the whole world, okay? Because I, I would like to see, um, hear some stories and stuff. Because I really do love hearing stuff like that. Some of the dumbest criminals they had some dumb criminals in here and things the one they're gonna take a picture the man faked his death we're gonna take a picture <laughs> with the wife that's supposed to be all sad and distraught that her husband's dead yeah they should definitely do something like that then even with the last people why would you have your why would you have your kid okay in a in the same house and it's just yeah that's i'm telling you right now it's just there's there's some dumb people out there but anyways everybody go subscribe to uh fact faction they have two hundred and seventy five thousand and subscribers i mean they subscribed to me so i was happy to see that so uh yeah go not just based off that reason they upload very very interesting and great videos these are things i can like tell people about like if it's just starting up a conversation and just lead into this like i just felt like yeah here's some of the videos i've seen send them over to these guys because it's like these are some really really interesting people i really do enjoy watching their videos and stuff stuff that i can you know i i can't relate to it myself but i would give my opinions and my views and then tell stories about or things i've heard on the news or something that can relate to this i've never been through stuff like this before but uh anyways yeah go subscribe to them if you're uh new to my channel you just seen this video go subscribe to them and things and uh, please like and subscribe to me too, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you are new, please like and subscribe. Doing it again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.